Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Giacomo. Today I'm here with the Shop Pride project. I'm gonna show you how to turn an old piece of furniture into a special piece for your shop. This is a pretty common console kind of design. I'm sure that many of you can have access to similar pieces. Here we're gonna build a beautiful station for all the sending supplies. Here it's gonna have a drill station and a charging station and on the side we're gonna have space for hanging clamps. We're also gonna refinish this old piece completely. We're gonna sand it, we're gonna repaint it, and it's gonna look fantastic. The first thing I needed to do here was to start disassembling this piece. The top could come off, so that's what I did as a first step put everything away in a Ziploc bag. I have a video about the importance of Ziploc bags in the shop that I posted a couple of weeks ago. And as with any piece of furniture that needs to be refurbished, the first and most important thing to do at the beginning is to clean it well, because you don't want to sand the dirt into the piece. You can use a light detergent, TSP, or even dish soap. Just make sure that you clean the whole piece very, very well. Even the bottom, everywhere where you're sanding should be cleaned thoroughly. Here, the top was in really bad shape. And so I made sure that I could clean it as well as I could. The piece was a little wobbly. It was an old piece. I estimate that it's about 20 years old. My neighbor was going to throw it away. And so I took it because it is made, as you can see here, of real wood. This is not a particular board and it's going to be very, very sturdy, but it needed to be reinforced. And so I didn't have my um, neighbor throw it away because I knew I could do something in my shop. This piece has been in my shop now for like a few months and waiting to be refurbished and I finally found the time and I decided to make a video about it because it's going to be very instructional I think in general for people that want to refurbish pieces. By watching this video and following the techniques that I use you can restore a piece of furniture that is old for whatever purpose you're doing it whether for resale or whether you want to keep it. Here, I'm going to use 120 and 220 sanding nets and you want to be kind of delicate sanding depending on what is the finish that you're going to apply here. I am going to paint it and so I just need to make sure that I create a correct type of surface. And if you've seen my previous videos, you know that I'm a fan of my Wagner Flexio sprayer and that's the tool I am going to use to paint this piece as well. I am going to use a primer here and I think it's a good choice because the color that was previously on the piece was black and so it's very important to cover it with primer and make sure that the primer is going to create a good transition where the new color is going to go. the primer was drying I started working on the insert for my drill station and to create this piece you really need to work with the measurements of your specific tools and here you can see I have some pencil lines on this piece that mark where I am supposed to cut and these are all measured according to the measurements for my 
the world impact driver and my the world drill here you see me using my jigsaw this is a good tool to perform this task you don't have to use a jigsaw you could use just a regular handsaw but the jigsaw works really fine for this application especially cutting plywood it's not really the best for cutting hardwood but on plywood it's got no problems whatsoever for this piece i created a drill station insert that is going to have three spaces one for my impact driver one for my drill and then an extra one if i get an extra impact driver or an extra drill which i may do i would say that of the entire project this particular piece is the one that probably required the most planning just because the measurements need to be more exact and as you can see here from the video even planning how to fasten this insert into the furniture piece itself requires planning and here i decided to use pieces of wood actual pine not plywood because i wanted the screws that connect the furniture piece to the insert to go into real wood and the reason i didn't want to use plywood here for this piece is that sometimes when the screws get screwed into plywood and there's downward pressure the plywood can come off and the screws can come loose so here you see me using my brat nailer and the screws are gonna go into the wood in these three pieces that are gonna go and then get affixed to the actual piece of furniture i am using clamps here to keep the wood pieces together with the plywood because i don't want them to shift when i drive in the screws because if they shift then this piece is not gonna look good and also it could get all crooked so here in creating this particular piece you need to pay a lot of attention to the details making sure that all the pieces fit well together i could have probably gotten away with using just one screw here instead of two per piece but at the same time i wanted to make sure this is sturdy that it really lasts a long time and this drill and the impact driver are fairly heavy there are a few pounds each and so why not have the extra strength i don't think that in time i will regret that decision moving on to painting i'm gonna paint this piece the same color that i painted the other pieces that i built about a year ago for my shop and this is bare premium plus and the color is calligraphy it's a beautiful color that i really like and it's a pretty dark color that I think fares pretty well in a shop. As you can see here, I'm using paint conditioner. I usually do this because it really helps the paint dry better. It looks so much better with paint conditioner. It does slow down the painting time a little bit. And so if you're in a rush, you may find that annoying. But honestly, I don't think that cutting corners is a good idea and also if this sits in your shop every day and you see that you don't like the painting job you're gonna regret it so you may as well do it right <laughs> This is the drawer that I prepared for my sanding supplies and I have a separate video for this drawer. This is an undermount drawer 
and I think it deserved a separate video because there are special techniques for building under mount drawers and so I wanted to make sure to dedicate the adequate time to that so that people can refer to that specific video and also there I'm using some special techniques to use different type of drawer slide than is usually used for under mount drawers that is a little creative and so I wanted to have a separate video for this build of the drawer and as you can see it looks fantastic and it works great it's gonna be a great addition to my shop and it's gonna be perfect for my sanding supplies. And again, planning is very important because if you build a drawer that is custom made like I did here, you wanna make sure that the measurements at the end are perfect. For example, here I wanted to make sure that my sander would fit and it fits perfectly. To secure the drill station, I first use clamps to make sure that the piece is still and then what I did, I drove screws from the side and from the top and those are going to make sure that the piece is very sturdy and is going to pass the test of time. And with that done, it was time for me to start working on my charging station. There, I want to have my charger for my DeWalt batteries that I use for many of the DeWalt tools that I have. Also, I want to have my Ryobi charger that I use to charge the battery for my Ryobi brad nailer. And here I could secure them to the side of this piece pretty well with screws that are going to fit in the slots in the back of the chargers. And it's a solution that works very well. I had originally planned on building a storage area for my clamps here. But I abandoned that idea because I thought that building a charging station was a much better and more efficient way of using this space. We are now done and as you can see this old piece of furniture now looks brand new. It's perfect for storing my sanding supplies and to put my drill and my impact driver and all the other supplies that I can have here. I hope that you learned in this video how to refurbish an old piece of furniture whether it is for reselling it, for gifting it to a person that you love or for putting in your shop like I am doing here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, turn on the bell for notifications and please leave a comment. Let me know your tips and tricks for refurbishing old furniture. Thank you for watching.